This week on TGC News, Glock is the new Apple. Remington CEO says peace, and SIG drops, get it, a new gun. Tech Pack offers some of the highest quality firearms, EDC, and survival gear in a monthly package shipped right to your door. One month could be heavily focused on gun parts, the next on some sweet survival gear. They're always mixing it up and sending out stuff you will actually use. You now have three options for free items from them. Using TGC TQ will get you a free tourniquet. TGC Knife will get you a folding knife. And TGC Tool will get you a sweet pocket-sized multi-tool. To get your free item, punch in those codes over at Tech Pack. Dot com. Welcome back to another episode of TGC News, the only gun news show that covers things you actually care about. My name is John Patton. If you want a chance to win a brand spanking new POF Revolution 308 piston driven rifle and a trip to come hunting with me for some hogs down in Alabama, you need to get entered into the TGC Bacon Bash giveaway. For every $5 you spend on TGCgear.com, you get an automatic entry. The giveaway ends September 15th, so get on it. There's a link in the description below to find out all the details. I can't wait to take one of you guys on the trip of a lifetime for both of us. Now, let's get into some news. First up, Glock. Famously releasing incremental changes to their guns and not making any real leaps forward in a long time. Kind of like Apple. But much like Apple has the number one selling smartphone in the world, Glock has one of the best selling guns in the world. And that won't change with the addition of the brand new Glock Gen 5 guns. Over the weekend, I got a chance to handle and shoot a few rounds through one of these thanks to my friends at the Sportsman Shop in East Earl, Pennsylvania. I even met a couple of you guys while I was hanging out there, which is pretty cool. They had a Glock 19 Gen 5 and a Glock 17 Gen 5 on hand for demos. Let's break down the basics of the changes that were made to the new guns. First up, the slide nose is kind of chamfered and rounded off. Then the coating on the slide and barrel has been updated to what they're calling NDLC. That coating, in my opinion, is an improvement over the Gen 4 coatings. Then you have the slightly different barrel in that they've moved the rifling closer to the chamber as opposed to having a small gap. No idea if that'll actually improve accuracy or barrel life, but we shall see. Beyond that, they've ditched the finger grooves on the front, which is probably one of the biggest things. I like that on the 17, but I didn't really like it as much on the 19. They've taken the same texture from the sides of the grip and moved it around the front strap as well. Below that, they've opened up the magwell a bit with a cut in the front, as well as a bit of a flare on the port at the bottom. That goes along with the slightly improved magazine base plate. They're claiming that the new orange follower is a safety feature, and I guess that kind of makes sense because you can see it easier than the old black one, but if you're looking at the follower in a defensive situation, you may have bigger problems. The mag release button is slightly increased over the Gen 4. The trigger is said to be improved, but I couldn't tell. And they still have the same old cheap plastic sights that nobody likes. And on top of all that, they've upgraded the slide catch release thing to be ambidextrous. None of these things are earth shattering in any way. This is probably what the Gen 4 gun should have been. It's disappointing, but not surprising at all to see Glock doing things this way. We all want the big guy to innovate and push boundaries, but I just don't see Glock really breaking the mold anytime soon. I think they're almost afraid to rock the boat at this point and potentially lose their spot near the top. How many of you guys out there are planning to pick up one of these new Gen 5 guns? Let me know your thoughts on these down in the comments below. And in Gundustry Struggle Bus news, the interim CEO of Remington has stepped down due to personal reasons. There's no telling what personal reasons actually led to that happening, but I can tell you this. It's certainly not because the company was doing too good. <laughs> They've apparently started searching for a new CEO and have said that they'll look in all kinds of locations, including outside the gun industry. It's interesting to see that kind of stuff happening more and more in the gun industry. People are looking outside. It continues to grow and evolve and people keep looking elsewhere for new talent. The reality of the situation is that they need to find someone who will correct the course. Remington is a big part of a larger sinking ship known as Freedom Group. When you look at the brands they own, like AAC, Bushmaster, Remington, and therefore DPMS and Marlin, you start to realize that those companies are only surviving based on the products they sold years ago. Innovation at these brands is on extended sabbatical. Reports from Remington state that they are down almost $50 million the second quarter of this year. And the answer to that is simple. 
No one cares about any of the products they make right now. If you look at those brands hard, every single product they make has a competitor that is better. With quality assurance issues and lack of innovation, they will continue to ride the struggle bus for a long time. I'm not saying that they only make junk or that none of it's worth buying, but it simply isn't the best option in any of the categories in which they're currently involved. Freedom Group has successfully killed multiple once great brands, and that's a shame. If anyone at Remington is listening, all you need to do to win and become great again is worry about making a quality product and giving a damn about the customer. Not until then will you become great. In new product news, we've got a couple offerings. First up, Auto Ordnance just announced a new version of the Thompson, or Tommy gun, chambered in 9mm. I came down hard on Auto Ordnance's sister companies recently for completely dropping the ball on telling customers that they lost their credit card info, but regardless of that nonsense, this is still a neat gun. If you've never held one, they're heavier than they look, and that means they're going to be a dream to shoot in 9mm. I'm already imagining one of these things as a suppressor host. The MSRP on these is set at $13.64. Whew, that's not cheap. And not to be left out of the news for like 30 seconds, SIG has dropped, get it? <laughs> it's still funny. A couple new variations of the MCX Virtus, which we covered a few weeks back. Both of these new versions are called the Rattler. <laughs> one is an SBR and one is a pistol. Both feature five and a half inch barrels and a really weird looking grip. And if the five and a half inch barrel length sounded a bit off, that's because they're chambered in 300 blackout. The pricing on these starts at just over $2,700, further proving that SIG is drunk right now. What does this thing do that an AR-15 can't? Absolutely nothing. I'm sure these are nice guns. There's no doubt in my mind about that. But for $2,700, I'd be better off buying a Daniel Defense or maybe building my own, buying a suppressor and some ammo to feed it. I understand that this product is directed at law enforcement markets and military, but they have budgets to worry about too. What do you guys think? Would you grab a Rattler? <laughs> We've got another friendly fire question from Jay Andrew on the TGC Facebook page, and he asks, do you ever get burned out on the firearms industry? That is a great question. I know a lot of people that have absolutely been burned out, but me, not yet. Sure, there are days when I wonder if people will ever innovate again, but then there are days when I wake up and go, holy crap, I have one of the coolest jobs on earth. My position in the gun industry is unique, so maybe that helps. And since that question was a short one, we've got another question from the TGC Facebook page. You guys delivered big when I asked for questions, so I've got tons. This one is from Rocky Parkerton. He asks if there is more room in the holster market, given the wide variety of pistols, lights, and carry positions out there. The answer is yes, there is certainly more room. The thing to remember is that the holster market is crowded, but with good products and good marketing efforts and good customer service, you can grow. Look at Savoie Leather. They jumped into the leather holster market just a few years ago. If you asked people if they were looking for new leather holsters, they probably would have said no. But using good marketing, good service, and incredible design work, Savoie has grown to become something bigger than they could have ever dreamed. I hope that answers your question. Now, my friendly fire question to you guys. With all the deals on the market right now on ammo and guns, what's going to be your next big purchase? Let me know down in the comments below. And if you have a question you want answered on the show, you can send that to me via the Friendly Fire page on theguncollective.com or post it on the TGC Facebook page. The new Bloodline series of AR-15 barrels from Roscoe Manufacturing combines their years of industry experience making barrels for OEM use and brings that straight to you, the consumer. Using high quality materials and coatings, they make sure that the products they make hold up to hard use. Available now in 5.56 NATO, 300 Blackout, and soon in 9mm, they have the barrel to complete your custom build the right way. To get 10% off your barrel, use the code TGC10 at RoscoeManufacturing.com. Our gun tuber this week is from my home state, Pennsylvania. His style is really unique in that it's a lot more casual than what gun videos are traditionally based around, but still the production value is on point and the videos are a lot of fun to watch. Guns are not the only focus of this channel, but I think you guys will really enjoy it and want to see more. 
Say hello to Talon Sai. Hey everyone, my name is Talon Sai and welcome to Stuff and Things. Quick question, what's better than one fully built agency arms gun? Two fully built agency arms guns. Sunday gun day. Sunday gun day. You guys definitely need to go subscribe to his channel and tell him that TGC sent you. Now, just a heads up, I'm putting the gun tuber segment to rest for a bit. We'll be releasing a video that has all the channels we've covered so far sometime soon, but I think it's time to let this kind of rest. The reality is that I'm running out of channels that I feel are kind of up to par with the gun tuber of the week. The original idea was to feature channels that I thought were producing content that I feel is up to par in most aspects or better than what we do at TGC. And I wanted to give smaller channels a helping hand. It doesn't make sense for me to go and promote Mac or IB8888 or Hickok because you guys all know those channels. The ones that are smaller and didn't get featured yet, maybe it was because their videos lack something like good audio or good video or even good presentation. Or maybe it's because they don't make videos frequently enough. There's a ton of reasons why I can't and won't feature every gun channel out there. I just can't do that. I'm not telling you to stop watching your favorite channels. All I'm saying is that I'm not gonna promote channels that look like they were filmed on a potato while riding a roller coaster. There are still a few more channels that I wanna feature, but for now, keep on sending those suggestions so that when GunTuber comes back, it'll feature some great new creators. And that is it for this week's show, guys. Do not forget to get entered into the TGC Bacon Bash. There's a link in the description for that. And if you enjoyed this episode, be sure to hit that like button and share it with your friends. That's a huge help. And if you didn't enjoy it, let me know why down in the comment section below. And if you haven't, please get subscribed. You won't want to miss a single week of the show. And as always, thank you all for watching. We'll see you soon. The shirts worn in today's episode of TGC News were provided by Patriot Patch Company. Click the link in the description to learn more.